Just a few short years ago, Blackmagic Design released the Pocket Cinema 4K out into the wild and quite frankly, disrupted the indie filmmaking industry. Not long after that, they released the Pocket 6K and continued to innovate further by releasing Blackmagic RAW in a free firmware update for these cameras. What I'm gonna be doing today is talking to you guys about what I would personally like to see in the hypothetical Mark II version of the Pocket Cinema camera lineup. Now, before we do that, I'd like to invite you guys to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. On this channel, I share my passion of camera gear and bring you guys honest, in-depth, and to-the-point reviews on the camera gear that I get to use out in the field. So with that out of the way, we are going to talk about a few things that I'd like to see, but we're also gonna talk about some things that I do not want to see. Now, the very first thing that I would like to see with the future generation of the pocket cinema cameras is a better form factor. Now, I know that cubed form factors are all the rage. In fact, I've purchased a Zcam E2S6 and I've also used the Red Komodo. What I love most about cube form factor cameras is that they are extremely easy to rig and extremely easy to balance on a gimbal. In my opinion, the cube form factor makes the ergonomics a little bit better than this very wide camera body that they decided to go with. So what I would like to see is either a cube form factor or something more cube-like, something that's a little bit more modular, something that could possibly accept third-party accessories or black magic accessories, like for instance, the red DSMC2 line or the Kinefinity lineup. They do have add-on packs that or modules that you can attach to the camera. So that is something that I would love to see from Blackmagic is more of a modular design based on a more cube-like form factor. The next thing I would love to see added to the pocket cameras is better audio preamps. When Blackmagic first released these cameras, they did tout professional audio features. So they added the Mini XLR, which is a great feature. It's a great addition. However, I would like to see some improved preamps on the body of the camera. Now, I understand that that would definitely raise the cost of the camera and I'm willing to accept that if that means that I'm going to get better in-body audio. So that's something that I would love to see and I'm not going to ask for full-size XLR because for anyone who knows about that connection type that is going to sacrifice uh, either something, something somewhere. It's going to make either the camera body bigger or it's going to just overall change the, the inner workings of the camera. So I'm okay with the Mini XLR. I'm fine with that. I think we could uh, definitely stick with that. But if we just get some better audio preamps on the future generation, that would be a huge, huge plus. The next thing that I would like to see more of is something that I absolutely love on the pocket cameras as it is, is these customizable function buttons. As you guys see here, there are three customizable function buttons and I love them and they're in a great place. However, what I would like to see is more function buttons and that's fully dependent on the shape of the body. Personally, I think that even on this body, they could have fit some more function buttons somewhere on this body. And in fact, I feel like they could have at least fit four up top just by simply moving the power button somewhere. And personally, I felt the power button was in a terrible power switch, was in a terrible spot to begin with. So just adding some customizable function buttons, more customizable function buttons would be huge. Now, taking that a step further, adding illumination to the buttons, similar to what some of the Canon cinema cameras have, but simply adding more customizable function buttons would be a very, very welcome thing. Now, next up, I'm gonna talk about the sensor. You guys are probably going to guess that I want a full frame sensor, and I don't. I do not want a full frame sensor on this camera. And the reason being is because Super 35 is just fine. Don't let anyone tell you that Super 35 is garbage. It has been around for a very long time, and if it's good enough for Ari to be developing a new Super 35 camera, it's good enough for the Blackmagic camera. So there are a few other reasons why I would like it to stick with Super 35, and one of the reasons is that you have a much wider selection of lenses when it comes to Super 35. There are more Super 35 anamorphic lenses than full frame, and they are much more affordable. You will spend thousands and thousands of dollars to purchase a full frame anamorphic lens. On the other hand, you can still use full frame lenses like I'm using here. Here I'm using an SLR Magic APO Hyperprime. This is a full frame lens, 
on a Super 35 body. There's nothing wrong with that. However, you cannot use a Super 35 lens on a full frame body without going into a crop mode. Now, for those of you who are saying that's okay, you're fine with that, be my guest. Personally, I would rather not shoot cropped if I don't have to. So shooting in Super 35 is just fine. Yes, you can get more shallow depth of field if you're shooting full frame, but to be honest with you, it is not a necessity. So you don't always have to shoot with shallow depth of field in the first place, but again, it doesn't have to be full frame. Now, speaking of the sensor itself, what I would like to see is for Blackmagic to take their new sensor that they have on the Ursa 12K and give us some form of that sensor in this new camera. Whether that is 8K or 6K, to me, it really doesn't matter. I'm personally fine with 6K. Would I like 8K to have really amazing 4K or 6K footage? Absolutely. But again, Super 35, just fine with me. Now, the final thing that I would like to see come to the next line of pocket cinema cameras is for it to integrate better with Blackmagic's video assist monitor. Personally, I don't always have access to this screen, whether you are shooting on a tripod that's set up high or you're on a gimbal, whatever the case, you don't always have access to this screen as amazing it would be. Now, yes, you can get a monitor like the Port Keys monitor, which has camera control, and yes, you can use the app. However, having that monitor, which carries over the amazing UI that's on the camera, straight to the monitor, you're able to control everything from the video assist, I think that's a no brainer. So having some sort of camera control built into the video assist so it plays better with the cameras would be a huge plus. So now that we've talked about everything that I want to see on the next line of the pocket cameras, we're gonna talk about a few things that I don't want. Now, first up is IBIS. Yes, it would be nice to have IBIS. However, I feel it would benefit Blackmagic much more and us as users much more if they spent their R&D on other features like making Blackmagic RAW even more powerful, making the color science as best as they possibly can, investing as much into this sensor as they can. Again, IBIS would be nice. However, it's just something that in my opinion is not necessarily needed on this camera. Personally, based on the work that I do, I rig this camera up in car mounts. I, you know, rig it on a windshield, rig it on the hood of a car. You know, it's on a gimbal and I don't want that floating sensor because that creates micro vibrations. So again, IBIS is, in my opinion, not necessary. If you do want more stable footage, here's a tip, make your rig a little bit heavier, use a lens with OIS or use a gimbal, use a steady cam, use a glide cam. There are several ways that you can make your footage more stable without using IBIS. Now, the next thing, and you guys are gonna lose your sh me for this and I'm sorry, but I do not want autofocus on this camera. I don't want it, I don't need it. And while some of you do need it and would find it very useful, for instance, wedding filmmakers, I just personally don't want it. And there's a very, very valid reason for this, I feel. And that's because if we get autofocus on this next line of cameras, it's gonna be completely new technology for black magic. Yes, there is kind of autofocus on this, but I wouldn't even call it autofocus. It's, it's flat out terrible and it's unusable. So would I like to see it on this camera as an option? Don't get me wrong, it would be fine if it was good, but in my opinion, what we get for autofocus on this next camera is not going to be best in class. If I want autofocus, I'm gonna go for a camera that has best in class autofocus like the Canon line of cameras. So that being said, I just don't feel I need it. I don't want it unless it's freaking flat out amazing. Now, next up, it's kind of in the same line. You guys can probably guess what I'm gonna say next is I don't wanna flip out screen. I'm not vlogging with this camera. And if you're vlogging with it, more power to you, but I'm not gonna hold the camera out like this and you know, with a flip screen. First of all, the camera is just ergonomically terrible, which hopefully is fixed with the cube form factor. But I don't need a flip screen. I'm not vlogging with this camera. And again, this goes back to using the right camera for the right job. If you want to vlog, you could be using a Sony, you could be using a Canon. There are specific cameras made for vlogging. So that being said, maybe a tilt screen like the a7 III or you know, cameras like that, that's fine, that could be useful. But I don't think that this camera needs a tilt screen. Again, if you are looking for these options, 
everything that I just mentioned that I don't want, those are all features and options that are on other cameras that are really good and very affordable, just like this camera. So if you are looking for those options, maybe that's the camera for you. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys think about what you want on the next version of the Pocket 4K or what you don't want. If you guys think what I said is absolute garbage, let me know in the comments below. Either way, I'd love to chat with you guys. And that being said, I'd like to invite you to join the Driven Films Discord channel where you could chat with me and other filmmakers about stuff like this anytime, all day long. You can find a link to the Discord channel in the description below. Now, don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, take care. Thank you.